Okay, this video is going to be going out to a whole bunch of new subscribers sent to me by Jordan Peer. Thank you, Jordan Peer. Uh, speaking of Jordan Peer, this is a Jordan Peer certified TV. It's a 1978 Hitachi IC solid state, 9 inch inline gun color television. Some um, one of my friends dropped off today. Uh, he's learning about vintage electronics, and I helped him troubleshoot a radio, and he gave this to me in return. And uh, this is a Hitachi model CU-150R, solid-state color television, and April 1978 when it was manufactured. I've already had a look inside of it. It's very cramped, just like that Sears. Uh, as people who are longtime members of the channel, they know that I have an addiction to these TVs. It's missing the pull-on volume and contrast knobs. The UHF is a very odd UHF, but it is intact. And the VHF knob has got a chip out of it. So I have not powered this up. I did, all I did was find the combination for uh, the correct uh, way to plug this in because it uses a proprietary cable, but I found the correct combination through trial and error. So, turn brightness all the way up. I have not seen a picture on this thing yet. All I heard was the high voltage come up because it's solid state, and I powered it off so we'd see it together. So. Oh! It's vertical hole that. Looks like it needs caps, maybe. Oh wow, that, that, not, that control is dirty. Very bright. Very, very bright. CRT is very good. Color is... Oh! And there probably went the capacitors. See a main filter there. <laughs> that sure didn't last long. I wanted to see a picture on it. Okay, I've let it set for a minute. Please work. Oh. There's nothing even there. Yeah. We got some issues now. Dang it. See if our connections are still solid. Maybe it might be one of these. Maybe not. Why is the signal generator portion messed up? Sometimes the percussion method is the best method. There we go. No, I think it's toasted. I think the filter caps just failed. Something like that. Well, you did see it come up for a minute there. We'll open it up. 
Let's see what blew up. This is 120 volts, right? Yeah, AC, DC. 120 volts. Oh, that's still plugged in. Oh, I could have killed myself. Um, we do things very safe here. This is more of a Shango 066 style and not a Jordan Peer style. Jordan Peer is a professional. I am not a professional. I'm someone who is learning the art of being a professional. But technically, I'm a shade tree. So We'll, we'll open her up. Okay, they're calling another severe thunderstorm warning on us right now. Uh, and there indeed is a massive cell that's going to be moving in the next while. Anyway, here it is. It's not one of these little cramped things that uh, I just so love working on. Right. Um, this is an inline gun set. 250 AF. B22, I 250 AGB22. I don't know if I can test that. I'll have to look. I think the BNK467 can test it. I think it's a little tiny CRT. I think it's tiny. It's very small. Uh, I don't think we'd need to test it. It looked really good. We got one, two. Four boards. Yeah, this is gonna be fantastic to recap. This is gonna go on the back burner for a little while, along with this thing that needs a ton of capacitors. I just don't want to screw them up. Because these do not show up hardly ever around here. I need to get good at recapping these. That's why I have three of them that all need caps. That one... That little gold star. And I have a Sanyo, not a Sanyo, sorry, Panasonic. You to see some of the news. We are not talking about a tornado at this point. Uh, we are talking about severe thunderstorms that are capable of producing some fairly significant wind damage. Interesting here, too. As we move past 8:15, and the initial warnings are the... going to have uh, expired. You'll notice that the severe thunderstorm That's where we are. on the board uh, is well That's what's coming. what you would consider to be the thunderstorm. Where the and two hours ago they said it would uh, it would be just a few clouds as it reached here, and it's just keep, uh, it keeps getting stronger. It's going to be uh, the strong winds. I will widen the view just a little bit here for you and show you. As it came through the St. Louis area earlier, it is showing some signs of weakening just a little bit. But now looks like it is certainly going to continue on for at least the next half hour uh, or so. And that's one reason we see these warnings that are posted out until uh, 1, until 8.45 and on the southern end running until 9 o'clock. So uh, be very aware of these storms that continue to move through the <laughs> wind damage uh, and bringing power outages. Also some very heavy rain in this and a lot of lightning, and certainly a storm. This old guy needs some caps. To, you to make sure you stay on the safe side. A severe thunderstorm. That's us. Until 1 a.m. In the morning, I do not expect these storms to last until 1 o'clock, uh, but that's what the watch is posted for. So, those are all going to get recapped. I'm going to get good at recapping those so I can do something like this, because I don't want to screw... Screw one of these things up. I'm going to be very methodical. And uh, now that school starts, uh, expect uploads to be not as frequent and uh, sporadic. So, also, uh, the friend who brought that TV by also brought the AM, his AM transmitter by. And um, I learned something new. So I've never had an AM transmitter except my old one which was a Motorola, which was like homebrew. So it looks like somebody took a Motorola, like, army broadcasting unit for radio, CB radio, and turned it into an AM transmitter. And he brought his talking house AM transmitter over, and I figured out how they got, a, got away with the uh, FCC requirements. They have a 
switch on the back that says like local distance and um, there's a piece of plastic switch that you can't move it from local and it runs at like 25% power you know output power on local so if you move that piece of plastic you can put it to distance and it's full power like four or five watts maybe six or seven and uh, it's it, it definitely boosted the signal a whole lot so I guess that's how they get around the FCC requirements but you can see that this did have at one point probably a smoke smoked piece of plastic you can see the in fact there's some of it still there a smoked piece of plastic that was probably around the front of the screen but hey not it's not bad for somebody who just gave it to me practically you know not bad at all so we'll try one more time to get it working and then we'll have to put it up here we go okay sounds happy and there it goes so it is definitely that filter down there I believe that one have to try and see what value that is. Maybe we can botch something in there. Because I let it set. Maybe if I bring it up on a Variac. Oh, another fuse is blown. Um, let me try and botch something in. Okay, I got a 680 at 200. Nope, it's still doing that. I think it might be shorting, actually. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I guess it might not be the filter capacitor. It could be another capacitor that's shorting in the uh, horizontal output circuit. Um, I don't know. I, I, have, I have to admit, I have hardly any experience with solid-state color sets. So, I am guilty as charged off that, but I wonder if it'll stay on long enough we can get a picture. Or I could run it, I need to find a fuse so I can run it at reduced voltage, that might help. Okay, gonna run it at reduced voltage. holding. And there it goes. Oh. I think it's actually reforming. Whoa. Mmm. What, what, what blew up? Was it that big filter? What blew up? I want to know. I can't see it. What exploded? Oh, that smell is just mm, savory. Savory is the correct word. I need to get a flashlight. Do you know what? It's still a flashlight. What blew up? Hmm. I don't see anything. I'll try to get you in there. I actually don't see anything that looks like it's physically blown up. But apparently the TV works now. Whatever was loading it down. It's no longer loading it down. So it looks like we have a blown out picture now. Yeah, very blown out.
after that cap was, it, it died hard. And it kind of... I think it might have been the video circuits. Nope, that's the crapping out. Dirty pots. That is color, I think. Brightness does nothing. Yeah, just overloads, man. Looks like the horizontal's rolling too. Oh boy, it doesn't like that. When somebody. Ooh! It's contrast. Yeah, brightness does nothing now. I didn't cremate the brightness control. I'm sorry, have I been doing this the entire time? I hope not. Color. Definitely works. Can't see it because it's blanking, but it's there. Crank up to full voltage. Oh, you get bars in the picture. Is it vertical? Is vertical. Turn the lights out real quick. It's there. So when that capacitor blew, it it did something. It's just so bright. God, you can't see it. It's just blanking. Look at this crap. Very bright. Anyways, actually, let's see if we can see if we can get the over-the-air station. Wait, my antenna's broken. That's right. So, what you do is you go and set the TV over here. Um. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, it's over there. Put the knobs back on. And I'll power it up. Quarantine was only a year. You're right. It's like riding a bike. 
Yeah. Yeah, that capacitor is not happy with us. It's slowly getting better. It's slowly getting better. That's kind of cool. Anyways, thanks for watching.